Happy New Year and welcome to another plant tour video. Today we're going to just cover the main floor plants and see what's growing and what's changed. And I hope you enjoy the video. Keep watching. All right, so here we've got the green spider plant on one of the plant hangers here in the foyer and it's got a lot of babies so I think we're gonna do something with them and propagate them. We've got our regular spider plant that's variegated also in one of the plant hangers here. It's great because they can just let the leaves cascade down. Actually this one hasn't had any babies yet so I think it's almost at the point where it's due for making some extra members of the family. Here we've got the philodendron brazil. This lovely chunk of leaf that was removed by the resident cat. So not an insect but somebody that likes to munch on some of the plants. I don't think he actually ate it, I think he just chewed it off and dropped to the floor. But anyways, what can you do? So hence this one is now on one of the plant hangers as well. And just coming over here, we've got the Wandering Dude variegated. This was actually a series of cuttings that I got from a fellow Instagram plant person and it's doing really well. And again, it's on one of these plant hangers. Down here, we've got one of our Syndapsus pictus, Silver Pothos or Satin Pothos. This is actually a series of cuttings from the mother plant that I have from uh, Sheridan Nurseries. This has produced so many offsets for me in, or new plants for me. Very easy to root, very low maintenance, and um, it's fairly tolerant of low light situations. And next to it is the ZZ plant, which has not really been doing much but it's stayed healthy, doesn't need a lot of watering, doesn't need a lot of light. It's also low maintenance. On the other end of the spectrum here, we've got the Calathea or Calathea orbifolia, which is one of the more finicky plants, as you can see. This plant I've had for about a year and it waxes and wanes in terms of how it looks. Right now it's not looking too bad, it did get thrips as many plants did over the summer but I put a lot of the plants outside for the summer and I think sort of the the insect population outside actually helped control control the thrips populations on some of the plants and actually that some of the damage so these actually this calathea as well as this one were put outside and you can actually see there's new growth here there's some, there's a new shoot here and then on the other side there's also a new shoot but I don't think we can see it, kind of, just down there. Um, so it is doing okay. This plant does get misted probably every day or every other day. That's a good way of keeping the humidity or, or sort of amending the humidity levels during the winter. And this Calathea macoyana actually is it's not as finicky in terms of um, showing signs of distress on the leaves because the, the leaves are much more rigid and firm, um, almost to the point where they're sort of papery. And this one has done pretty well. Even though it did have thrips, it didn't really sustain as much damage as the Orbifolia. And down here we have a very thirsty <laughs> piece lily Spathophyllum, I think that needs watering. And down here, actually, this is uh, another piece lily that is probably at least 15 years old. This started as a tiny little plant um, that I bought for the office. And over time it got really big and I just had to take it home. So it's currently sitting in the foyer in one of these lovely baskets from Ikea. So that's the foyer and we'll move into the living room next. So here we've got under our lamp, which is on timer, a couple of plants that are too big to really put near a window, unless I want all the windows blocked. So these are both philodendrons. This one is the philodendron xanadu, although I think it's been renamed, reclassified. This is the philodendron saloon. 
These were both outside in the summer and they did amazingly well. They put out tons of new growth. Once again, they got thrips as well, but we're dealing with that and just trying to keep on top of checking all the plants and they did benefit also from being outside in the summer. That did help control the thrips for the time being and I'm just checking them constantly now that they're inside and under artificial light. This is a new addition here. It's a very affordably priced little, it's actually a TV stand from Ikea, the LAC TV stand for 15 bucks. It's nice and narrow and low so that it can actually sit in front of a window if you have low, if you have like a low bay window or just a low, if you have floor to ceiling windows, if you're in a condo, this is actually a good option to be able to put your plants on a ledge or some type of surface if you don't have a, a windowsill. So down here we've got our, one of our Enjoy Pothos plants. And just coming over here, I'm just trying to make sure that it's not so backlit, but um, we have the phil another philodendron Brazil. We have the lime philodendron, lime colored one, as well as the standard green. This is actually back, this long, tall thing here. That's actually an orchid. Um, and I believe it's called the Laparis grossa, but uh, I'm not sure how to pronounce that exactly. Another little Syndapsis pictus cutting. This is a Maranta that actually had thrips and unfortunately the prayer plant, prayer plant family, uh, they don't seem to do so well with plant sprays. I discovered last year that neem oil or neem oil based sprays, they are, they damage the foliage. So I stopped using those for thrips, but I did use a soap based spray and it did burn some of the leaves. So I cut all the leaves back, the ones that had died and I have this one leaf so I'm really hoping that it does something and, and continues to grow from the base and then I've got this little sense of area here as well as the bigger sense of area here that actually <laughs> produced a baby which is now the variegation is lighter and more pronounced than the parent plant it's also bigger so we've got these plants sitting here on this low bench type shelf Coming into the dining room here, we have our lovely humidifier, which I didn't want to set up any humidifiers this year. I wanted to just see if we could get by without adding extra humidity, but now that it's gotten colder, it really does need to be a little more humid in here for some of the plants. Not all of them, but some of them do benefit uh, and the leaves don't get so crispy over the winter. Behind the uh, humidifier, I've got some dendrobiums that I actually put outside in the summer. So these guys are just overwintering inside. This is a huge dendrobium. It's the nobly type. Another, this is actually a very healthy set of cuttings from the Syndapsis pictus. I have a couple of peperomia cuttings here. This actually, this watermelon peperomia, which I think might need a little bit of water because it's a bit droopy. This is actually from cuttings as well or from, um, a leaf cutting that I rooted and it grew really nicely and this had thrips as well and it was put out in the summer and the humidity and the heat outside just really um, jump-started the growth and I think that kind of compensated for any loss of leaves from thrips this is the Pilea peppermoides here and then this is the Calathea or Calathea lancifolia. This also had thrips. This brown spot here actually is evidence of the thrips damage. And unfortunately, I was inspecting this plant a couple days ago and noticed another leaf that was showing signs of something. And of course, I looked on the underside of the leaf and there were the white nymphs of the, um, the thrips. So this one has been treated and it's back out here now. So hopefully any, any remaining thrips have been dealt with. But this one does very well in terms of 
the Calatheas. It really is not fussy like some of the other ones and it puts out a lot of growth. So on the spectrum of fussiness for Calatheas, this is probably on the very low end. Here we've got some cuttings of the Marble Queen Pothos. This one actually was sort of a salvage from the original plant. It got stem rot and root rot and these were cuttings that I took from the parent plant to salvage what I could. This is a philodendron and I am sorry I forgot the name of it. Um, it's not doing too well. It's actually quite sort of, it's, it's stagnant in its growth. It's kind of just not really done much. There's a little bit of a new leaf here, but I'm not quite sure what's happening with this. So I'm gonna look into that. And this is a recent purchase actually from Walmart. It's the Hoya Carnosa Rubra or Crimson Princess. This was a really, really healthy Hoya for not a lot of money. It was only $16.98 Canadian. And that's a bargain when you consider how much cuttings or small rooted plants cost for Hoyas. Down here we are rooting some Hoya cuttings. So what I've got is, I've got the Hoya cuttings. You can't really see them because I'm trying to keep the humidity really high. So they are in their own little greenhouses, which I do vent several times a day, but they are sitting on the floor register for the furnace. So they get really good heat <laughs> from the bottom throughout the day. And the amount of rooting that I've seen and growth is amazing. So if you're ever looking to root cuttings of Hoyas, this is not the scientifically proven method, but this really is a very fast way of rooting them and promoting growth. And now over here, we've got our orchid setup. We have our orchid tower. So we've got a lot of Cattleyas down here. And we've got actually a Psychopsis, which unfortunately, it's also, uh, I believe it's also called Papilio. But I did not realize when I purchased this that the flower spikes produce flowers sequentially. So you'll get a flower on a flower spike. It will finish blooming, fall off, but then you will get another flower from the same flower spike. And it can produce that, it can produce flowers multiple times from the same spike. And of course I didn't know that, stupid me. I cut off the flower spike before actually researching the orchid so unfortunately this stub here is the result of my stupidity anyways i will know better next time so these guys are all orchids and up here we've got our other cattleyas from other videos you know that these are all from well most of them are from lowe's they are the better grow cattleya orchids and the exciting part is that this one here in this lovely black and white pot is putting out a flower. And this is the first flower of all of these orchids that have been in my care that have actually, this one is the first to put out a flower while it's been in my care. I've purchased a couple of orchids um, like this one over here, this, this tall one here. This one was already flowering when I bought it, but these ones that I bought from Lowe's were all in their pre-flowering stage. So it's very exciting because this one was purchased about six months ago and it's putting out a flower. This one is the Cattleya, it's the Walkeriana Semi Alba Carmella. And um, yeah, so we'll see what it looks like when it flowers, but I think it's gonna be beautiful. So I'm very excited about that. And finally, last but not least, Actually, there's a couple things here. These are just, um, there's a jewel orchid in here that's under uh, humidity. This is a little greenhouse and the very last remnant of my Calathea white fusion here, if you can see it behind the glare. Trying to keep the humidity up, which is pretty, it's doing pretty well. And then um, there's a Bialara here, which um, I got discounted, so it's not really doing much yet. I've just repotted it and it is just getting established. But last but not least, of course, the finale should be the Thai Constellation Monstera. 
which has put out another new leaf here and it's done quite well. It is susceptible to thrips. So this one I am watching like a hawk. And as soon as I see any sign of infestation, I deal with it because I do not, this was an expensive plant and I am not going to let this become a victim of thrips. Anyways, that's it for now. That's the main floor plant tour. Thank you so much for watching. If you enjoyed the video, please give it a like. Please comment and I will, I read all comments and try and respond to any questions and subscribe to my channel. It's a small channel and I appreciate every, each and every one of you who subscribes. And I hope this video is at least somewhat helpful or at least enjoyable to watch. All right, thanks and have a great day and we'll see you in the next video. Bye.